Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Highlander Summit Signature Event, checking in 70407R Refraction. I uh, seen last year we checked in with back at WPI New York State Champs last year as well too, so congratulations on that. We can't wait to see in your first event here how you're going to be doing in this incredible season as well too. A lot of great things we'll be breaking down with Refractions here. Just watch your first match, look absolutely awesome. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, something called a doinker, I guess we'll learn more about what that is on the robot. Uh, but a lot of great stuff too, some things with their macros as well too, and just an overall great design. So let's bust more into this robot, talking here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Braxton, let's start out on this robot here, talking about some of your design philosophy and how you approach this year's game. This is your first event going in, so I'd love to hear more about that, and we'll be starting to go more into your robot with that back map as well, too. So when we started our robot design, the first thing we kind of focused on is definitely the positive corners. We noticed early on back in May that those would be extremely important, and so filling up mobile goals would be our first priority, so we have a hook intake to combat that. But we also noticed from watching matches in early August that wall stakes are going to be coming increasingly important. And so we started to focus more on that. And we used this redirect system, which my teammates will go more in depth with. Um, but our main focus was to have a system that could redirect the ring as fast as possible. Now, the, um, as we'll talk about later, the downside to that is that we only use one ring for our wall stake mechanism. It, it, it doesn't have capacity of two, only one. Um, however, it's very fast and we use a lot of macros for that. Moving to our back clamp, um, we use a uh, first class lever with the pistons back in here to grab the goal. This is uh, different than what we've seen some other teams do with what is a third class lever with the pistons connected some, somewhere down here. And this gives us a lot more mechanical advantage so we can use our claw basically down to when it's at around like 30 psi which is pretty low um, and it will still grab it um, effectively and get rings on it every time so. something i want to ask you from a design philosophy standpoint you know with the rules updates came out recently i'm guessing you started building your robot prior to that did anything change for your team with the rules update uh approaching into this event um one of the main things is the, the new smaller corners have made it, um, I think, just driving the robot a little bit more challenging because you have to make sure better that the goals are in the, in the corners. Um, for example, sometimes in skills, I would, um, I would go to bash a goal in the corner and it wouldn't go all the way, so I'd have to sure. back up and go all the way. Be interesting seeing that. Nick, uh, let's talk about the uh, intake on this as well. I'd love to see kind of how that ring process works all the way through. So walk me through how this design works for your robot. So the intake starts with a 200 RPM motor, which and this allows us to get this chain up to 400 RPM. And our wheels, our initial intake is 600 RPM. So uh, looking at this, can we bring a ring in and kind of see how that process works? So when you're looking at designing on this, uh, your, your team going with the three hook design on that as well too. Uh, what considerations do you have in regards to like the speed that you're going versus how many hooks, that sort of thing? So our main consideration is how, uh, we wanted to get a lot of consistency with uh, with getting rings on. So our main goal is trying not to get to like skip over rings and for it to be able to consistently go into the mobile goal. Yeah, and it was the fastest that uh, that we could go with our motor. Sure, makes a lot of sense. Let's keep moving on, uh, talk more about, well, of course, this doinker that we mentioned as well, too. Uh, but uh, Max, talk about that with your uh, lift uh, and then your hopper as well. So much to break down and obviously working really well, just even in the first match, it's kind of cool to see. Right, so the lift is actually three mechanisms on its own. First and foremost, the motor that powers it spins this whole thing at 33 RPM. It can move up and down pretty quick, which is important for getting those rings on the wall sticks quickly. So moving up here, the first mechanism we have here is our hang. It's pretty simple. It's just a drive up. We drive up to the bar. We get an eight-tier hang. We're probably only like a quarter of an inch off the ground. Yeah. It's a very small margin, but it gets us off the ground. 
Now, as we move up here, we have our hopper mechanism right here. The way our hopper works is that when we reverse intake, which Matt will talk about more, the ring lands here. Now, as you can see, it can move freely out of the front, which means that when we lower this onto a wall stake, it will just slide off as a robot reverses wall stake on the wall stake, which is really handy. Now, the most interesting and probably one of the parts that we're most proud of with our mech with a robot here is the doinker, which I think is aptly named. The point of a doinker is to remove, or rather to break down a stack of rings. So you have, say, a red ring and a blue ring stacked on top of one another. We don't want to intake the red ring and we want the blue ring. So what the doinker does is it just doinks the top ring off so that we can intake the ring on the bottom. It's pretty useful and it's really simple too. It doesn't... It is also good for tipping over goals, and one of the nice parts about it is that it is entirely passive. It doesn't require any pneumatics, so we can use air elsewhere for things like our gripper mechanism. I mean, it's pretty well like a passive system. You're not using any color sensing or anything like that with it, too. Like, that's really cool to see the effectiveness of that. Sometimes simple is better. Right. So one of the things uh, looking at uh, from the design on your left on there, so you have that kind of that uh, low level climb that you have as well, too. Are there any uh, design considerations to maybe going up higher with climbs in future events? So truth be told, we haven't considered going for higher climbs because it requires too much sacrifice. If we wanted to use our lift to hang higher, we would need even more torque, which would come at the sacrifice of speed, which would make our wall stake me mechanism significantly less effective. Matthew, let's talk about the uh, redirect macro that you have as well too. Detail that for me a little bit more, uh, how it's working on your robot, and after the first match, is it something that you really implement yet? Well, yeah, as you said, it is a macro, and it's uh, awfully simple. So. When you hold uh, the normal intake button, of course, it spins as normal. And if you were to hit the macro, it spins as normal until this little distance sensor detects the ring in which it will reverse and the ring will just slide right into the hopper. And easy to access, easy to use. And we did use that in our uh, first match. It is also implemented in uh, one of our autons and also used in autonomous skills. It's just very important to use because it's it's easy and saves us a lot of trouble. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned in regards to autonomous as well too, what is some of your autonomous match strategy? Can you break that down for me or maybe what you did in the first match? Well, in our first match, uh, we ran our uh, top blue program, which uh, very simply, it scores uh, five rings on one of the mobile goals and then touches the um, center. It's just for, to, in order to score enough points, give us a shot at, um, winning autonomous, and also completing some of the objectives that we need for the autonomous one point. Well, Refraction has been great to talk to you again to learn more about your progress for this year. Uh, obviously, great success last year, so we can't wait to see how you implement that here at the Signature event. We wish you best of luck. Really cool robot, and we can't wait to see how you do. So thanks for telling us more about this machine, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.